Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel ascend from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no man could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne, and round the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These, These are, are the people who seek, seek your face, face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. 
Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up to the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and the daughters of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday in the territory of the Bishops' Conference of Southern Africa, we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints, which is usually celebrated on the 1st of November. But in order to allow as many people as possible to join the celebration, the bishops decided to move All Saints to today. Every year, the Church recalls the example, the witness, and prayer of these holy men and women who have been identified by the church as saints. These saints are more than just role models. They are family members with whom we continue to share a relationship in a bond of prayer called the communion of saints. The saints are our ancestors and friends, that cloud of witnesses who accepted the realism of their lives and despite their own struggles, shared it with others on earth. And they continue to do so now before the throne of God in heaven. Every year when we celebrate this day, the gospel we proclaim recalls for us Jesus' teaching about happiness, the Beatitudes. And notice how in the gospel that none of those Jesus' names as blessed or happy are expected. The poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful, the persecuted. 
Jesus' blueprint for happiness reflects little of what the world may call happiness. And he goes far deeper, and it is always in relation to those who are on the margins. Just look again at that list, the poor, the meek, the persecuted. Pope Francis says, happiness is not in having something or in becoming someone. That true happiness is being with the Lord and living for love. And so what does Jesus mean when he uses the word blessed? This word is sometimes translated as happy or fortunate or favored. In other words, Jesus is saying that divine favor is upon those who are poor, those who mourn, those who are persecuted. And this would have been welcome and surprising news to the crowds who heard Jesus that day, just as it is to us who so often think that the great ones amongst us are the rich, the famous, or celebrities. The saints, as today's gospel tells us, are blessed for they lived and loved unselfishly. The Beatitudes describe the saints. They refuse to conform to the values of the world, to live self-centered lives. Rather, they were sensitive to the needs of their neighbors. They chose to be meek rather than arrogant, to live with a poverty of spirit rather than inflated egos, to work for what is right, God's will, and to live with pure and sincere hearts. People may have laughed at them, but the saints got their rewards. Theirs, Jesus says, is the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes describe the saints, but are also to be understood as our framework for Christian living. They are exactly what Jesus lived. Pope Francis says, the Beatitudes do not require extravagant gestures or superhuman, superhuman strength, but are for those who live through the trials and hardships of daily life. So on this day, we too are challenged to model our lives on the spirit and promises of the Beatitudes. This is not easy. It's quite challenging to put these Beatitudes into practice. What might be the invitation for us? They remind us of who we are, firstly, our identity. The saints remind us that we are the beloved sons and daughters of God, chosen, called, and missioned. They remind us of what our future is. They remind us to keep our sights fixed on God, to remember whom we belong to, and the journey of possibility that God invites all of us to embark upon. Mostly, they remind us of our future, our destination, to be with the Lord in glory for all eternity. They pray for us that we might come to know ourselves and our identity. Second, the saints encourage us. They encourage us in our own struggles because like us, they also endured the ups and the downs, the joys and the struggles of life. They grew from strength to strength. They matured in the Lord as they grew in years and lived as best they could to their lives to the full. Pope Francis says, like everyone, they breathed the polluted air of evil that is in the world, yet they never lost sight of Jesus' footsteps along the way. And so too for us, our struggles do not overcome us. The ups and downs, the, the joys and the struggles of life are not hurdles, but the very stuff of life that is the path to holiness. Holiness is reached in the ebb and flow, the grind of daily life, not outside of it or apart from it. It's not beyond us, but possible for us if we, like the saints, choose the way of Jesus. The saints realize that our lives are not for us, but for others. And that's perhaps the third thing, the great generosity of the saints, their concern for others. They were not individualists. They care about others and show particular concern for those who live on the margins. They recognize and uphold the sacredness of all. 
in their service of others. And they ensure that those whose dignity is violated in any way are cared for, restored, and healed. And we, like them, are invited to have the same deep affection for the marginalized. We, like them, are called to be holy men and women for whom the service of others is the way of expressing profound joy and of living the gospel. Let's pray today as we reflect on the lives of the saints, that we would claim our true identity and recognize that all people are made in the image of God, invited to live in God. And secondly, that we would be encouraged by their example. And finally, we would have a special concern for others, the disadvantaged and the marginalized of our world. Because when we do that, we, like them, are truly living the kingdom here and now. We are the blessed of today. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God Bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.